Hi, I'm Sean Wu from Stanford University. Hi, I'm Da Chi Wang from Boston Children's Hospital, Hoffer Medical School. We're moderator for the cardiac development and congenital heart disease sessions. And this session was quite exciting and illustrated some very interesting science that's been taking place in cardiac development. And the work that we're going to be discussing with you involves two broad areas. One is related to the formation of the heart valve, and the other is on cardiac regeneration. And what we'll do is we'll dissect these two areas in two parts, starting with the heart valve and then followed by regeneration. What we know is that the heart valve development is consists of various cell types coming in during early stages. And during heart formation, um, the valve is critically important to regulate the flow of blood during the early stages of heart formation. And the talks that we have just heard today is addressing some of the key molecular mechanisms involved in that process. So one of the really interesting ideas that have emerged from the study is the role of the endocardium, which are the lining cells in the early heart. And we've seen very exciting work from Professor Zoll, who is at Albert Einstein, talking about using a very unique tool to be able to take away gene function in these early um, valve cells to see how that they are important for the formation of the heart. Um, we've also heard some interesting work from Professor Joy Lincoln related to the role of uh, the interstitial cell, which are the cells in the middle of the valve, which are also important, and she addresses some of the locations for where the, uh, the cells actually originate from. Yeah, that's exact, and it's very exciting. I mean, traditionally, we thought that the valve is just a, you know, a piece of tissue, and we did not know how their morphogenesis mm -hmm. and how uh, their defects related to congenital heart disease. Now those new studies, I think, show mm -hmm. heterogeneity of those population of cells, how the signal molecules control their uh, specification and their function. I also noticed that Catherine Yes's group also showed that mm -hmm. the BMP signal pathway was also involved in the mm -hmm. bowel formation and mm -hmm. the effect of their cause uh, diseases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are really exciting and interesting topics for the field. And so the next grouping that the speakers addresses is the topic of regenerative biology, which is something that Professor Wong here has had some very exciting work recently. Yeah, so exactly. We know that the heart form, the cardiomyocyte forming the fundamental heart, uh, it was known that uh, the adult hearts cannot regenerate because the mature adult cardiomyocyte after last cannot uh, repopulate. Now we have more insight into the formation of the heart, the maturation of the cardiomyocyte, and the association with the regeneration. Several studies from this panel of discussion show very exciting study. Um, Professor Henry Sukov at uh, South California showing that uh, the uh, early cardiomyocyte, there is a mononuclear cardiomyocyte, and those mo mononuclear cardiomyocyte play a very important role during the later stage of regeneration. There is a close association with the Bill Pooh's group, group from Harvard Medical School. Uh, using genetic studies show the IGF signal pathway is involved in the adult cardiomyocyte uh, regeneration. They show that uh, the adipocyte, uh, adipogenesis and the cardiogenesis is uh, correlated during the myocardial injection. And I think all of the studies are now tied together of the cardiac morphogenesis and the adult cardiomyocyte uh, regeneration. And there was really a very interesting study presented from Professor Ferulli in Indiana who talks about uh, quite a unique tool to understand the same process of regeneration but occurring in the early developing heart and that provided a connection between the regenerative work that investigator had been looking at in the adults or in the neonate 
um, to a regenerative process happening in early development. This study illustrated quite interestingly that you are able to take away a significant portion of the muscle cell during fetal development and the embryos are still actually quite robust and is able to recover. And what that really does is it gives us hope that the potential that we could identify the mechanism that clearly exists in these fetal heart that would enable us to be able to utilize that signal for the application in the postnatal heart to look at treating neonates and also treating adults with heart diseases. Yeah, I totally agree. I think what we have learned here uh, during the heart development, the morphogenesis, transcriptional, and the signal regulatory cascade will really enable us not only to deal with the congenital heart disease, also will enable us to better understand and to deal with the adult heart diseases because some of those molecular mechanisms uncovered here will be applied and probably will be widely used to study the wide, broad spectrum of cardiovascular diseases. Mm -hmm. And really the basic science work then here it really sets the stage for us to be able to discover new therapeutics down the road to be able to identify ways to treat people and that certainly fits very well with mission for the American Heart Association and the sessions like this I think have been really a fantastic way to promote the science and also to share ideas among investigators. And we really hope you enjoy this session um, with the cardiac development and uh, would look forward to see you at one of future AHA meetings.